To watch these important lessons, subscribe to DP Education's YouTube channel right now. Click on the bell icon to stay updated on the latest lessons. Sri Lanka's largest free online school, DP Education. Hello dear grade 7 children. Today we are going to learn the 17th lesson of the science textbook that is nutrients in food. So this topic is not new to you all because you have learned this topic many times. You all are very familiar with the different types of nutrients present in food. Even in your lower grades, under the ERA subject, you have learned about different nutrients present in food and the functions of them. Okay, children? And even in your health subject, you have learned the same topic. So let's see what are the things that we are going to learn under this lesson, children. So we are going to learn about food and nutrients. So this topic, as I explained you all, this topic you all are very familiar with. So under this topic, we are going to learn about what are the different types of nutrients present in food, what are the food items that you can find these different nutrients at, they are functions too. And the second topic is test to identify food. Now this topic you are not familiar with because under this topic we are going to learn how to identify different nutrients present in food experimentally. So let's start the lesson now. So the first topic is food and nutrients. Okay. So look at this is a table given about a main diet. So here air, water as well as food are the most essential for the existence of life. So when we consider about different needs, the three basic needs are air, water and food. So why do we call them basic needs? Because without air, water and food, we cannot live. Okay, children. So here, look at this table. Types of food taken for main diet. Okay, go through this one. So day is given Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And the diet is given breakfast, lunch, dinner. Okay, children. So here you all can see Wednesday breakfast. A glass of milk, string hoppers, dal, coconut sambal. Thursday, a glass of milk, bread, kiri hodi. Right? So, Friday, rice, fish, coconut sambal, and kiri hodi. Right, children? So, this is the lunch. So, lunch, Wednesday, you all can see rice, green gram, right? Green gram seeds, fried dry fish. And a fruit as dessert. Right? And here, Thursday given the lunch rice, dal, fried potato, pala mellum, green leaf mellum. Okay? And then Friday, rice, winged bean, pumpkin, and egg. Okay? So, all of these are very healthy meals. Right, children? So, here, dinner on Wednesday, roti with lunomiris. Papo, right? On Thursday dinner, noodles, potato curry, egg and mango. Okay. And Friday, rice, fish, vegetable salad, lufa and banana. Right children. So when you go through this list, this breakfast, lunch and dinner, you all can identify because now you all know about healthy meals. You all can understand this, all these menus, all these lunch, breakfast, dinner, these menus are very healthy ones. Okay, children. So as I told you all, we are going to discuss about the importance of different types of nutrients too. So can you identify the different types of nutrients present in these different types of food items, children? Right? So try to write down what are the different types of nutrients. Now in this lesson, we did not learn anything about nutrients, different types of nutrients, okay? But when you go through this one, as you have learned many things about nutrients, now you all are familiar with this. Try to identify what are the nutrients present, okay? So let's go to the first one, Wednesday breakfast, a glass of milk. What are the nutrients present in milk, children? So, Basically, milk contains a lot of proteins, milk has calcium, right, other minerals as well. Okay, string hoppers, when you consider string hoppers, what is the main nutrient present, children? The main nutrient present in string hoppers is starch, right? Now, starch is coming under carbohydrates. 
So we are going to learn further about carbohydrates here. So string hoppers has a lot of starch and it's a starchy food and starch is coming under carbohydrates. What about dal? Dal has a lot of proteins as well as carbohydrates and also minerals. Okay. Coconut sambol. Coconut sambol has uh, coconut. Coconut contains fat. Okay. Coconut sambol has fat and minerals and vitamins as well because we add uh, lime juice when we make coconut sambol. Therefore, it has vitamin C. Okay. Likewise. Right, children. Uh, so, we'll go to this dinner one. So, roti with plunomeris. Roti, roti is again a starchy food. has a lot of carbohydrates. What about pepo? Pepo contains vitamin A because it is a yellow color fruit. These type of fruits have a lot of vitamins. Okay, so it has vitamin A. Right, we will take another one. This uh, uh, lunch, Friday lunch. Rice, wing beans, pumpkin and eggs. What about rice? Now, rice has uh, a lot of carbohydrates. Okay. If it's red rice, red rice contains a lot of vitamin B as well. Okay, children. Wing beans, or what we call dumbbell. Wing beans is rich in proteins, children. Okay. Proteins and other vitamins and minerals too. Okay. Wing beans is very healthy food. Pumpkin. Pumpkin is a yellow color vegetable. Right, it has a lot of vitamin A and also other minerals as well. And pumpkin is rich in carbohydrates as well. Right, children, egg, egg contains, basically egg white contains proteins and egg yolk contains fats. Right, children, so when you go through each of these food items, you can understand that different types of food items contain different types of nutrients some of the food items contain only one or two nutrients but certain food items contain a lot of nutrients in it okay so we will see what are the different types of nutrients we'll go through this there are different types of food mentioned in the above table right there are five main nutrients required by our body and should be present in the food we eat as you all have learned about nutrients, you all can write all these five nutrients now. So what are they? Let's try to write children. So we can discuss about carbohydrates. Carbohydrates. Proteins. Lipids. vitamins and minerals right children carbohydrates proteins lipids vitamins and minerals so these are the main nutrients present in food okay children so even though these are the main nutrients present in food children when we take a meal Apart from these five nutrients, another two things should be included. What are they, children? Adequate amounts of fiber and adequate amounts of water. Right? We are going to learn about the importance of fiber and water in food. They are not coming under main nutrients, but those, those are the important things that should be added in a meal. Okay, children? Right. In addition to above mentioned nutrients, a certain amount of water and fiber. Right, water and fiber are also important, should be present in the diet. Right, we are going to learn about the importance of presence of water and fiber in food. So, let us consider about the type of nutrients and food which they contain. Now, we are going to learn about each of these nutrients in detail. Okay, right. So, first we are going to learn about carbohydrates. Look at these pictures, you all are very familiar with these food items, right, children. So, carbohydrates. Now, when we consider carbohydrates, carbohydrates is made up of carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. Okay, children. So, at the same time, carbohydrate comes in two forms. That is sugar and starch. Okay, so we know different types of sugar. Carb glucose is one type of sugar. Right? And sucrose is the sugar what we use at home. That is called as sucrose. 
So those are different types of sugars. Those are also coming under carbohydrates. Starch, starchy food like rice, string hoppers, right? Potato, they are also coming under carbohydrates. There are two main forms of carbohydrates, sugar and starch. So the differences between the sugar and starch you are going to learn in the upper grades, okay? So the carbohydrates we take are in the form of sugar and starch, right? Sugar and starch, those are the two forms. And they give energy to our body. What is the main function of carbohydrates, children? Carbohydrates give us energy, right? They give energy to our body. This is the function. So look at this. Identify the food rich in carbohydrates. Here bread, it contains starch, rice, bread fruit, right? Noodles, potato, sugar these are some food items with carbohydrates what are the other food items that you know children right so pasta and uh, jackfruit now breadfruit also con breadfruit contains a lot of carbohydrates jackfruit also contains a lot of carbohydrates right food items like noodles right pasta string hoppers hoppers right pit too they also contain a lot of carbohydrates children okay so this is potato and other yams also contain a lot of carbohydrates. Grains also contain a lot of carbohydrates. Cereal. Okay. So there are a lot of carbohydrates containing those food items as well. Okay. Right. So other food rich in carbohydrates, we will write some of them. String hoppers. String hoppers, cereal, cereal and grains. Right, and pito, uh, roti, jackfruit. Jack, right children, so these type, type of food items and here we can write yams, okay. So these type of food items also contain a lot of carbohydrates. So now you know about carbohydrates, when we consider carbohydrates, there are two forms of carbohydrates. What are they children? Those forms are sugar and starch, okay, sugar and starch. What is the main function of carbohydrates, children? Carbohydrates give a lot of energy to our body. And now we learn about some food items that contains carbohydrates. Okay, children, we'll move on to the next. Right. So the next topic is proteins. Right. What do you know about proteins, children? Now, proteins also contain, as I mentioned you all before, that carbohydrate is made up of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. Protein is made up of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen and nitrogen. Okay, children. So, the, these are elements. Okay. So, what is the function of proteins present, present in your body, right? When you take a lot of proteins. So, what is the main function of proteins in your body, children? Proteins are very important for the growth of your body. Right? Proteins are important for the growth of your body. And at the same time, proteins are important to repair cells and tissues. Okay, when we, you, when we work, right, day-to-day uh, -day life, when we work, what happens, right, some cells die and for repair cells and tissue, proteins are very important. Okay, children, so here, proteins, animal food, as well as plant food contain proteins. Okay, animal food like meat, fish, milk, eggs, they contain a lot of proteins. As well as plant foods, if there are vegetarians, when they don't eat animal food, right, there are other ways of getting protein, right, soya beans, soya milk, mushrooms, okay, and uh, dal, cowpea, grams, they contain a lot of proteins, children, right, children, so animal food as well as plant food contain proteins, right. They are used mainly for growth and repair. Okay. We will underline this. They are used mainly for growth and repair. Right. Repair of cells and tissues. 
right? So here extra knowledge. The growth of 80% of the human brain takes place from the conception of the child in the womb up to two years from birth. Okay, so which means by birth only about 20% of brain cells are developed. Okay, so therefore a diet of pregnant women should contain adequate amount of protein. Okay, so when the pregnant mothers, they have to take a lot of protein containing food, then only she can provide enough proteins for the baby in the womb. Okay, children, right. So here, some food items with proteins, right? Some food items which are rich in proteins, eggs, soya seeds, fish, dry fish, meat, okay? We will write some of the other food rich in proteins. Now, earlier also I mentioned a lot of food items, right? Plant food items also there, right? Soya seeds, cowpea, green gram, chickpeas or grams, what else? Mushrooms. Right, green beans contain a lot of proteins. Right, children, soya beans given here, dry fish, meat, fish, eggs. Okay, children, so these type of food items contain a lot of proteins. Well, you can write the list longer. Right, children? Okay, we'll move on to the next. So we have this extra knowledge part. The table given below shows the amount of protein recommended daily for different types of age limits, okay? So here the minimum amount of protein essential per day, right, per day. So here the age is given in years 2, 4, 8, 16, 18, 21. Protein grams, 1 kilogram of body mass, right? So here 1.2. At 2 years, the protein intake should be per 1 kilogram of body mass. At 2 years, 1.2 grams of protein is needed. Right, when the child is about 4 years, it is less than this one. That is because up to 2 years, even earlier we learn, up to 2 years the growth is higher. Therefore, they need more proteins up to 2 years. Okay, so 1.2 here, here 0 0.9. Okay, so 8 years. It further reduces because when you consider the childhood, up to two years, the growth is faster. Okay. And again, for about 10 years, the growth takes place, but not that rapidly. Okay. That is why here 0 0.9 grams, 0 0.7 grams likewise. Okay, children. Now here, protein grams 1 kilograms of body mass, which means... In order to calculate the correct amount of proteins that a child or a person should take per day, this value should be multiplied by the body weight. Okay, if the four year old child is, let's say, about 15 or 10 kilograms, then what you have to do? The 0 0.9 should be multiplied by the body weight, and then you have to calculate the correct amount of proteins that should be taken per day. Okay, so here 8 years protein intake should be about 0 0.7 per 1 kilogram. So, okay, 0 point gram per 1 kilogram of the body. 16 years, look at this one, this is the highest, 0 0.77. Right, so here 1.2, this is the highest and then again 0 0.9, 0 0.7, 0 0.77. Okay, even this year, when you consider the adolescents also, because of the growth of the body is higher, what happens children? The protein intake must be higher. 18, 21, you all can see here, when coming from 0 0.77 to here, 0 point, it decreases, 0 0.45, right? And 0 0.35, it further reduces. Why? What is the reason? By the age of 16, 18, Almost the growth is completed. After 18, growth still takes place in some children, but at the same time, uh, some people at the same time, the growth rate is less. 
the growth rate is higher during the childhood and adolescence. Okay, children, so it's highest according to this leaf. The protein intake should be highest when during up to like 2 years, 1.2. Here it gradually decreases. Okay, so that is because of the growth of the child, the person changes during different time periods. Okay, children, right. So we have learned about proteins also. So when you consider proteins, what is the importance of proteins? Proteins are important for the growth of your body and to repair cells and tissues. And at the same time, protein food can be obtained by eating animal-based food and plant-based food as well. Okay, then move on to the next. So then the next type of nutrient is lipids. Right? So when you consider lipids, lipids also come in two forms. Okay, lipids also come in two forms as fat and oil. So most of the time, fat contains in animal-based food and oils contain in plant-based food. Right, children? So nutrients which supply a high amount of energy for the body are lipids. So what is the main function of the lipid? Lipids also produce, provide a lot of energy to the body. Actually, one gram of lipid provides more energy than that of one gram of protein, carbohydrates, children. Right? Carbohydrates provide the energy. And at the same time, when you consider one gram of lipids and one gram of carbohydrate, so lipid, one gram of lipids provides more energy than that of carbohydrates. Okay? So nutrients which supply a high amount of energy, you'll underline this. Nutrients which supply a high amount of energy for the body are lipids right and lipids include fats and oils fats and oils these are the two forms of lipids right so here oils which are liquid in nature are mostly found in plants okay oils normally at room temperature present as liquids fats which are solid in nature are highly abundant in animals okay so the main function of the lipid is to supply energy to the body. Right, children, it supplies energy. Are there other functions of the lipids, children? So when you consider some vitamins present in food, right? When the vitamins are absorbed by your body, some of these vitamins uh, are dissolved in water. But some of the vitamins are not dissolved in water. They are only dissolved in oil, right? Therefore, Lipids are important to absorb certain types of vitamins as well. Right. Now look at this assignment. Inquire about the advantages of having storage of large amount of body lipids in animals like camel and polar bear. Right. So camel, camel has, <coughs> sorry, excuse me. Right. So camel has a storage of lipids as well as polar bear also stores lipid under its skin. So what is the importance for these animals? Just think about the places these animals live, children. So camels basically live in desert areas, right? With like very high temperature. Polar bears live in polar regions with very low temperatures. So both these environments are extreme environments, deserts and polar regions, okay? Both of these environments are extreme environments. So, which means when the camel lives in the desert, what happens, children? Because of the very high temperature, it should protect its body heat, right? And at the same time, polar bear also needs to protect its body heat, right, children? So, camel and polar bear both need the storage of lipids in order to maintain their constant body temperature. Right, because when you consider camel and polar bear, they both are mammals, which means they are warm blooded animals. Warm blooded animals, body temperature does not change according to the environmental temperature. Right, because we have a specific mechanism to increase and decrease the body temperatures at necessary times. Okay, children, so in the same way as these two animals are living in that extreme environment, they can maintain their body temperature because of this special lipid layer present in their body, lipid uh, storage present in their body. Okay, children? Right. We'll move on to the next. 
So some food items which are rich in lipids given here, egg yolk, right? The yellow color part of the uh, egg contains lipids. What about the egg white children? Egg white contains proteins, okay? So egg yolk, curd, right? Butter, coconut, ginger leaf, these type of seeds also contain a lot of lipids, right? What are the other food items, children? Meat also contains lipids. Fish also contains a certain amount of lipids, likewise. Okay, and uh, fruits like uh, butter fruit also contains, so avocado, that also contains a lot of lipids. Okay, children, right. So we'll move on to the next. So then we are going to learn about vitamins and minerals, okay. So when you consider vitamins and minerals, now at the same time, you must have learned another fact about these nutrients. Based on the, or the, depending on the amount of the nutrients that you have to take per meal, all these five nutrients can be again grouped under two main groups as macronutrients and micronutrients. Okay, so macronutrients are the nutrients that you need in large amounts or large quantities. And micronutrients you need in smaller amounts. Okay, children. So what are the macronutrients in the health lesson? You must have learned this part. Okay, so macronutrients. What are the macronutrients? Carbohydrates, lipids and proteins are needed in larger amounts. So they are known as macronutrients. Vitamins and minerals compared to those macronutrients, they are needed in smaller amounts. Therefore, they are known as micronutrients. Okay. So vitamins and minerals. Vitamins and minerals are required in small amounts, but they are essential nutrients for our body because these vitamins and minerals can keep our body healthy. Most of the time, vitamins and minerals can strengthen the immune system, right? Therefore, your body can fight diseases, okay? Right. So, this group of food protects us from diseases. This is the main function, right? This group of food protects us from diseases in different ways. There are different uh, functions of different vitamins and different minerals, okay? So therefore, they do protective functions and are important in maintaining good health, right? They do protective functions and are important in maintaining good health. Right, children. So first we are going to learn about different types of vitamins, okay? Vitamin and sources of them. So some of you all are very familiar with these food items that contains different types of vitamins. Let's try to write this. Right. So there are six different types of vitamins present in food, okay? A, B, C, D, E and K. So there are other varieties of vitamin B present, therefore we call it vitamin B complex, okay? So there are six types of vitamins present in food. We will write the food sources, children, right? You also try to write answers for this one, different examples for food sources. Vitamin A. So basically vitamin A contains in animal liver, cod liver oil, right? Dark green leafy vegetables also contain a lot of vitamin A. And at the same time, milk contains vitamin A, right? Uh, what else children? Yellow color fruits and vegetables contain a lot of vitamin A. Okay children, let's write yellow fruits. Right, animal liver, animal liver, cod liver oil, cod liver oil, right, dark green leafy vegetables. And you can write the other examples too. Right, children. Yellow fruits, animal liver, right? Yellow fruits like carrot, okay? Uh, fruits and vegetables all, okay? So yellow fruits and vegetables like uh, pumpkin and uh, carrot and uh, uh, pepper, they all contain a lot of vitamin A, right? So vitamin B, vitamin B contained in Red rice, cereal, right? 
right meat fish green leaves right these type of food items right dry cereal meat fish green leaves green vegetables green vegetables etc right vitamin c vitamin c is contained in citrus fruit titles right vitamin c is like the uh, different fruits like with, with, with very sour taste contains a lot of vitamin c right so vitamin c contains in uh, citrus fruits so what are the citrus fruits like citrus fruit means the fruits in that certain family called the citrus family right lime lemon orange mandarin these are the fruits of citrus family they all contain a lot of vitamin c okay we will write citrus fruits or we can even write separately lime orange right mandarin right those are the citrus fruits lemon okay So not only that, the fruits like tomato also contains tomato. Okay, tamarind, and some vegetables also contains. Right, children. So next, vitamin D. So what are the food items? Let's write butter. eggs milk cod liver oil fried chicken cod liver oil fish right these type of food items also contain vitamin d vitamin e Vitamin E contained in green leaves, cereals, right, wheat, dark green vegetables, dark green vegetables. Right, vitamin K. Vitamin K, let's write vitamin K contains in cabbage, right, spinach, cauliflower, right, tomato. They contain vitamin K. Right, so when you go through this list, you can identify some food items contain not only one type of vitamin, they contain many vitamins. Okay, now here cod liver oil contains vitamin A as well as vitamin D, rich in vitamin D too. Okay, children, so when you consider milk, milk also contains vitamin A. Right, it also contains vitamin D as well. Green leaves contain a lot, many vitamins here. When you go through the list, green leafy vegetables, right? Yellow fruits, they contain different types of vitamins. Right, children? So you all can understand what is the importance of eating healthy meals, right? So what are the functions of these vitamins, children? Different types of functions are there. We go through this. This is for extra knowledge, but anyway, you all are going to learn. You must have learned uh, these functions also in your health lessons too, okay? So extra knowledge, vitamins and functions of them, okay? Vitamin A, B, C, D, E, K. What are the functions? Not only just one function, there are many functions to one vitamin, okay? Vitamin A improves the vision. So that's why 
uh, from our small age we are asked to drink milk okay and uh, eat uh, yellow color fruits and vegetables try to improve our vision to have a healthy skin okay children so vitamin a is important to improve the vision maintain healthy skin and hair right vitamin b vitamin b contained in red rice okay vitamin b development of memory power reduce lethargy lethargy means you are very lazy to do your work you are feeling very lazy right so vitamin b develops your memory power and reduces lethargy okay vitamin c maintain healthy gums when you consider oral health your health of your gums also important okay so maintain healthy gum strengthen the immune system okay children that is why sometimes when we have cold we are given vitamin c tablets okay children so vitamin d development of bones okay because vitamin d helps to absorb calcium present in food so calcium is very important to uh, maintain healthy bones okay therefore development of bones the functions of vitamin d prevent decaying of teeth because when vitamin d present your body can absorb calcium present in food if your body can absorb a lot of calcium it helps to maintain healthy teeth and bones okay that is how vitamin d helps in maintaining healthy teeth and bones as well right vitamin e maintain cell division what is the meaning of cell division when you consider your body your body is made up of a large number of cells these cells have to increase in number as you grow right cells divide and increase in number now the present cell divides into two and increase the number thereby so this keeps on happening as you grow this is known as cell division okay so vitamin e is important in cell division okay and the growth vitamin k vitamin k involved in blood clotting mechanism so when there is a wound you all know if the wound is not very big after a little while a blood clot forms and the bleeding stops this is a very important mechanism okay children so this process helps to reduce bleeding okay children so blood clotting takes place properly in the presence of vitamin k okay vitamin k is one important mineral to help blood clotting mechanism okay children right we'll move on to the next so some food items which are rich in vitamins now what did we wrote some food items in that list right some pictures are here carrot carrot has a lot of vitamin a right red rice what is the vitamin present in red rice red rice contains a lot of vitamin b okay papo also contains a lot of vitamin a right yellow color fruits and vegetables contain a lot of vitamin a right cabbage contains a lot of vitamin k milk milk contains vitamin a right and also milk contains vitamin d fish contains vitamin a d likewise okay children so you all can see more, a lot of food items contain different types of vitamins okay we are moving on to the next right so then now we are going to learn about different minerals and their sources okay so what are the different minerals now vitamins and minerals they help us to maintain a healthy body by improving our immune system by strengthening our immune system okay children so when we consider minerals there are different types of minerals children okay so calcium what are the food sources you all know that calcium helps us to have healthy teeth and bones what are the food items with calcium children milk cheese right small fish right these type of food items contain a lot of calcium so we will write the food items for these minerals as well okay so calcium small fish milk and milk products milk and milk products right children green leaves right so it contain calcium 
phosphorus phosphorus is another uh, mineral which is important for the important uh, growth of bones and teeth okay so when you consider bones bones are made up of a chemical substance called calcium phosphate so in that case calcium and phosphorus both are important to have healthy bones okay so what are the food items is phosphorus right uh, we'll write milk eggs right cheese meat garlic small fish etc right children so the next one is iron so what are the food items with iron children let's write so basically when it comes to iron children there are two types of iron called heme iron and non heme iron right so heme iron can be absorbed by your body very easily and heme iron are basically found in animal source food right like meat fish eggs likewise okay children non heme iron non heme iron actually basically found in plants okay so we will write down iron meat fish animal liver right animal liver spinach dal right uh, green leaves like uh, sarana to color right so they also contain a lot of iron sodium sodium is contained in meat right salt right children eggs milk right children then iodine so iodine is a mineral which is uh, which can be found in seafood okay children and also iodine salt so if you check the salt packet at home so when you buy salt just check the salt packet so the salt packet they mention something called iodized salt so when they make salt this iodine is also added in required amounts to salt okay so iodized salt contains iodine iodized salt right right seafood contains iodine right 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 children so these are only some examples if you can find you can write other examples as well okay children so the next one for extra knowledge given different minerals and their functions now we learn what are the sources of food with each minerals right and now there are functions so i already explained you all about the first two things okay so calcium main function maintain healthy teeth and bones and at the same time blood clotting during injuries blood clotting is an important mechanism that takes place during injuries when we have a wound because of blood clotting process the bleeding stops right after a little while when the wound bleeds after a little while automatically a clot a hard part forms blocking the wound that is known as a blood clot right so blood clotting is important in healing wounds and also uh, to stop bleeding okay so for that one calcium is necessary and the next one phosphorus so it maintains healthy teeth and bones and maintains strong muscles as well right children then the next one iron so iron formation of hemoglobin which is needed for transportation of oxygen in blood so when you consider blood blood has different types of blood cells right so blood has a type of blood cell blood cell called red blood cells so in these red blood cells 
there is a molecule, there is a substance called hemoglobin, right? So hemoglobin transports oxy oxygen throughout the body children, right? So when you inhale oxygen, what happens? Oxygen is given to blood inside the lungs. Oxygen is given to blood and then what happens? This oxygen combines with the hemoglobin present in blood cells, right? In the red blood cells. And then as the blood flows, what happens? This hemoglobin can transport oxygen throughout the body. So you all know that oxygen is one necessary factor in order to produce energy. When oxygen reacts with glucose inside your body, what happens children? Your body can produce energy, right? So in that case, so when we consider iron, iron is very important to form hemoglobin present in blood, right? Hemoglobin is a type of molecule present in blood. Iron is contained basically in hemoglobin. So if you don't take enough iron containing food, your hemoglobin production in your body will be reduced. So if you don't have enough hemoglobin, as hemoglobin transports oxygen, if you don't have hemoglobin, can your body transport adequate amounts of oxygen throughout the body? No. So if your body cannot transport enough amounts of oxygen to cells, your cells cannot produce energy. Right, that is why whenever you have uh, breathing problems, sometimes some of you, when you don't eat correct amounts of food, sometimes for a long period of time, sometimes you feel very tired. Okay, sometimes doctors advise you to take iron tablets. This is the reason because when you when there is enough iron present in the blood, it can produce adequate amounts of hemoglobin. So if your body has enough hemoglobin, body can your blood can transport enough oxygen to the body and thereby the energy production in your body will be higher, right? So your body has enough energy to do day-to-day -day activities. When you don't eat iron containing food, this energy production will be affected and you will easily feel tired even after doing simple activities, right children? So iron function is formation of hemoglobin which is needed for transportation of oxygen in blood. Right children, then sodium. Sodium transmission of nerve impulse in the nervous system, in your brain, spinal cord and all the other nerves to send messages from, messages from one place to another place, sodium is essential. Right, and the next one, iodine. Right, iodized salt contains iodine, right. So iodine, development of intelligence and memory power. Right, synthesis means formation, synthesis of the hormone thyroxine. Right, children, so you have a gland, a certain part in your throat called thyroid gland. Thyroid gland present near your larynx. Right, near your larynx, your thyroid gland present. This thyroid gland produces a hormone, a chemical substance called thyroxine. For the production of thyroxine, for synthesis of thyroxine, iodine must be there. So the thyroxine hormone is essential in your body for certain functions. Right children? So the, for the production of thyroxine, iodine has to be there. Right? We'll move on to the next. So here picture, pic, different pictures of food items with minerals. Okay. So garlic, garlic, garlic has a lot of phosphorus, right? Dal, milk, spinach, spinach with a lot of iron, sprats, go to color, right? These are some food items with food items rich in minerals. We discussed about many other food items too. Right, children? We'll move on to the next. Right. So you have this assignment to do, okay? Prepare an article on discovery of vitamin B and C by collecting related historical information. Now, this activity you all have to do by yourself. How are you going to find information, children? You can find information. You can go to your school library and you will be able to find some books related to this. What is the easiest method nowadays to find information, children? You can use the internet, right? Using the internet, you can find a lot of information. Right, 
So not only about vitamin B and C, you can find many other information about other discoveries as well related to nutrition. Right, children? So you don't have to stop by just finding information about the historical information about uh, discovery of these two. You can at the same time uh, find what happens when you don't have vitamin B and C in your body. Right? So those type of information also can be included. Right? You can make a small booklet. Right, children? Okay, we'll move on to the next. Okay, so we have this activity to do. Try to do this. Don't wait for me to do this. Try to do this activity by yourselves, children. Right? This is not included in the exercise part. You all know that when we do the exercise, you have to answer all the questions before me. That is how we normally do. Right? Even this one is not included in exercise. Now try to do this activity by yourselves, children. Right? So how to do this? Study table 17.1. That is the very first table we discussed about in this lesson. Okay. Study table 17.1. Design and display graphs or tables based on food items and nutrients contained in them. Right. So get the guidance of following chart for your creations. Now here this is one example. You can even uh, use it, make it as a table. Right, okay, either way. Now, this is a chart. Look at this one. In this chart, clearly it's given these are the proteins, lipids, vitamins, and minerals, and carbohydrates. So, in the inner part, examples are given for protein, fish, egg, meat, wind beans, for lipids, coconut, butter, milk, okay, for carbohydrates, rice, bread, pit dough, string hoppers, right. For vitamins and minerals, green leaves, vegetables, fruits. So we can do the same or in a different way using the very first table we discussed in this lesson. Right. So we will try to do that one now. I am sure you all are ready with your uh, charts or tables. Okay. So I am going to do this as a table here. So here this is the first table we used in the lesson. Right. So we discussed about in three days for breakfast, lunch and dinner, different menus used, okay? Right, so I'm going to take each of these food items and include them in different groups, okay? Right, so I'm going to do it as a table. So I will give you an idea how to do this. So I'm going to use a table. You can use other methods like the previous chart, okay? Right. Here yeah, I am going to write here carbohydrates. Proteins. Lipids. Vitamins and minerals. Vitamins and minerals. So we have to take each food item in menus and you have to include them here accordingly. So first we will take a glass of milk. So when you consider a glass of milk, what are the nutrients present in milk? Right? Milk contains protein. So we can include it here. Right? And milk has a lot of vitamins and minerals too. Therefore, even in this group, I can add. Right? String hoppers, what is the main nutrient in string hoppers? Carbohydrates. String hoppers. Then dal. Dal has proteins and also minerals. Right, even here. Even under carbohydrate, a bit of carbohydrate, they are in dal too. Right, coconut sample. Coconut. Coconut contain lipids. Coconut sample. Right. Then we will take again a glass of milk. We already discussed it, right? Bread, bread carbohydrates. Kirihodi, kirihodi so it's gravy. Okay, we will not include it here. Rice. Rice carbohydrates. Fish. 
which contains proteins, right? Lipids also they are, and even here we can add fish. Now you remember what we discussed in previously in vitamins and minerals. Okay, number of food items we discussed about, right? Coconut sample we already included. Here we will go to the lunch menu. Rice, rice we already wrote, right? Green gram seeds, green gram contains a lot of proteins. Green gram, right? Fried dry fish, dry fish contains proteins. When you fry it, lipids also there. Dry fish. Fried dry fish. Fried dry fish. Right? A fruit, vitamins and minerals. Then here rice included, dal also included, fried potato. Potato contains carbohydrates. You write fried potato here. Then it contains, because it is fried, it contains lipids. Right, fried potato. Okay, pala melluma. Right, green leaf melluma. Pala melluma contains a lot of vitamins and minerals. Pala melluma. Right, children? Rice included here. Wind beans contains proteins. Right? Pumpkin contains carbohydrates and vitamins and minerals. Pumpkin contains a lot of vitamin A. Pumpkin. Right? Egg. Egg contains proteins and lipids both. Egg yolk contains lipids. Egg white contains proteins, right? Egg. Right. Next one. Roti with lunumiris and papo. Roti contains carbohydrates. Here papo. Vitamins and minerals. Right, children, noodles, potato, curry, egg, mango. Next one. Noodles and potato curry has carbohydrates. Potato we wrote, we can write noodles here. Right. Egg also we mentioned, mango. Then rice we included, fish also we included. Vegetable salad, vegetable salad, vitamins and minerals. Okay. Lufa also, it has a lot of fiber too. Lufa also contains vitamins and minerals. And then banana also, vitamins and minerals. Okay. So you all can complete it in the table. Right, children. So as I told you all before, you can make it in different ways. Okay. Here it says, Design and display graphs or tables based on food items and nutrients containing them. Right? So you can do it in different ways, creatively. Right? So this is one way of doing that using a table. Right? By going through certain menus, you can do these type of activities. Not only this one, you can simply take the meals that you take in different time periods, right? Different days. Those meals also can be taken there. Try to do this type of activity. Right? We'll move on to the next. Right. So, we have this activity. Observe labels on different types of food containers. Study the types of nutrients containing them and tabulate. Right? This activity you all can do at home very easily. Right? 
when you buy different types of packed food and like uh, canned food items, you know that it always comes with a label, right? If there's a good standard, it will always mention the nutritional values as well, right? Nutritional information also will be added, okay? So observe labels on different types of food contains, containers, study the types of nutrients containing them and tabulate. So not only the nutrient, the amount also will be included in certain food labels, okay? So you all can study and you can include them in a table, okay? Right. So most food items are rich in different nutrients, not only just one type of nutrient, most of the food items, they contain more than one nutrient, okay? So example, dal contains carbohydrates, proteins and minerals. Egg contains proteins, lipids, vitamins and minerals. Right children, therefore, so when you consider nutrients, when you consider food items, so, most of the food items contain more than one nutrient, okay? Right. Next, we are going to learn about the importance of fiber. Now, do you remember in the beginning of this lesson, I explained you all, there are five main types of nutrients. Now, you know what are the nutrients. What are they? Carbohydrates, proteins, lipids, vitamins and minerals, right? We learn about all these nutrients now. Now, we know these nutrients and their functions and the food items that contain all these nutrients as well. Right now in the beginning of the lesson I explained you all other than these five nutrients there are two other things that should be included in your meals. What are they? We discussed about fiber and water. Now we are going to learn the importance of fiber in food. Right so most of the time you can find fiber in plant-based food items, right? Like fruits and leafy vegetables, you can find a lot of fiber, right? Okay, the fibrous nature of the food is called fiber, the fibrous nature. So you can see it now if you consider mango and no, sometimes you can see this fiber, right? But when you consider guava and no, they have they also contain fiber, but you can't see this fiber because this fiber, some of them are like long fiber, some are very short. Okay, so the fibrous nature of the food is called fiber. Some fiber present in food can be observed by your naked eye, like in mango, right? But some are microscopic, like in guava. Okay, right. So food rich in fiber. So in, uh, what are the examples? Unpolished food like red rice, unpolished food means like red rice, right? When these outer cover, outer tiny cover is also there, those are known as unpolished food, right? Uh, unpolished like wheat, wheat and all also comes in like this, right? Unpolished food contains a lot of fiber, right? That red color covering of the uh, this seed in rice, it contains a lot of fiber, okay? That's why red rice is rich in fiber, okay? And fruits like amberella, mango, guava, banana, pepo. So the fiber in guava, banana, pepo, you cannot see very easily because they are microscopic. But when you consider amberella, mango, you can see the fiber, okay? Vegetables like carrot, kohila, Cabbage, potato, drumsticks, beans, radish, loofah, they also, they are also rich in fiber. And then, and green leaf, green leaves also contain a lot of fiber. Right, green leaves also contain a lot of fiber. Okay, children, cereals and grains also contain a lot of fiber. Right, cereals and grains like kurakan also contain a lot of fiber. So here as number five, we can write, they are coming under vegetables, but we will write green leaves here. Green leaves not given anywhere. Green leaves. Right? Green leaves also contain a lot of fiber. So what is the importance of fiber? Why do we need fiber in our food children? So advantages of having food rich in fiber. Number one, reduce the absorption of fat in the diet of the body. So why do we need fat? 
fat is necessary to produce energy just like carbohydrates fat which means lipids also provide energy but remember too much of fat is not good for your body there are other side effects it causes obesity right uh, it can some the excess fat can deposit in your blood vessels and narrow them right so those are the harmful effects of fat but when there is a lot of fiber present in the food you eat the rate of absorbing fat by your body gets slowed down right children even though fat present in your food if fiber is also present because of the presence of fiber as the food you eat moves through the digestive system fat a lot of fat will not get absorbed to the body right reduce the absorption of fat a certain amount of fat will get absorbed but not too much which is healthy for you all right reduce the absorption of fat in the diet to the body right it slows down number 2 decrease the absorption of sugar glucose in the diet to the body why do we need glucose in our body children glucose is necessary one important factor to generate energy but too much of sugar present in your blood is also very bad because it causes diabetes right when fiber is present in your body it decreases it slows down the absorption of sugar or glucose present in the body which is again good for your body only the right amount of glucose will get absorbed not unnecessary amounts of glucose right children that is another important function of fiber that's the next one prevents constipation and reduce the risk of causing diseases like piles right so constipation means sometimes when you cannot pass when the correct amount of fiber and water is not present in food sometimes this undigested food when you pass them as feces or fecal matter sometimes it's very difficult to pass these feces right that is because the correct amount of water is not there when correct amount of water or liquid is not there in the uh, food undigested food this condition occurs this is known as constipation right children the occurrence of constipation will be minimized if more fiber is present in food right because when fiber presents in food what happens it makes it easier to pass through your digestive tract and out of the body to the undigested matter right children so now you understand even though fiber is not coming under part of the nutrients it's still very important and it must be there in your diet right children we'll move on to the next so the importance of water water is also not coming under a nutrient but water also must be there the adequate amounts of water also must be there that you have to take daily basis what is the amount of water that you have to take daily daily basis children so about 1.5 to 2 liters you have to take per day right 1.5 to 2 liters of water you have to take per day if you are very active if you engage in sports so at the same time if the environment extreme environmental conditions present like very high temperatures those type of seasons you have to increase the amount of water that you take right so what is the importance of water right we get water with our meals to a certain extent but we should drink now some some meals like some meals like fruit juice when you take right let's say fruit juice and some vegetables and fruits also contain a lot of water in them right so we get water with our meals to a certain extent but we should drink enough amounts of water to maintain good health too right so water is mainly used to cool the body surface we will write them separately the importance of water right number 1 to cool the body surface to cool the body surface what is the mean by cooling the body surface let's say if the environmental temperature is very high our body temperature also will increase but we because we are warm blooded animals we have a certain mechanism to reduce that increased amount of temperature right when the body temperature increases when the daily outside environment 
uh, environmental temperature increases, what happens? Our body starts sweating, right? When the sweat comes to the surface of your skin, it absorbs body heat and because of the body heat, it evaporates. Because of the loss of body heat, your body cools down, okay? So, to cool the body surface, right? Supply a medium for cellular reactions. We learn under the fourth lesson the importance of water. Water is very important. All the important cellular functions take place in a watery medium, right? That is why without water we cannot live, okay? Number two, we will write it separately. Supply a medium. For cellular reactions, cellular reactions, right? And then remove excretory products efficiently from the body, right? Excretory products means the waste materials present in your body. So when you consider the waste materials, removal of them, there are three organs important removal of waste materials, right? your lungs, your skin and your kidneys, right? Your lungs remove excess amounts of carbon dioxide and also water vapor, okay children? And your skin in the form of sweat, it can remove excess amounts of water, salts as well, right? When you consider your kidneys, very harmful substances like urea is removed by the kidneys, okay children? So, especially when you consider the kidneys, when adequate amounts of water is there, production of urine is efficient and thereby all the unnecessary products will be removed by your body very efficiently. Right children? So, we will write that one as well. Remove excretory products. Remove excretory products efficiently efficiently right children from the body and prevent constipation again to prevent constipation water is also very important right right prevent constipation So we learned the lesson about the digestive system. There you all know when the undigested food comes to the large intestine, it is present as a semi-solid form. But inside the large intestine, what happens children? About 90% of water is absorbed by the body and thereby the fecal matter or these uh, undigested food becomes a solid part, right? Because the water present in the eye is absorbed by the body. Right. So, as we remove this undigested matter from our body, it presents as a solid waste. Okay. But here, just imagine if you do not have, if you do not take adequate amounts of water, even by the time the food reaches the large intestine, it will not have enough amounts of water. However, when the large intestine absorbs more and more water, it will become more and more solidified, right? So when it is too hard, too solidified and too hard, it's very difficult to remove this fecal matter from your body. This condition is called constipation, right? So if you drink adequate amounts of water, you can prevent constipation. At the same time, you have to eat, increase the amount of fiber you eat too. So increase the eating uh, adequate amounts of fiber containing food and drinking adequate amount of water, both important to prevent constipation. Right children, so these are the uh, functions of water. There are many other functions too, but related to digestion and all, these are the functions to cool the body surface, supply a medium for cellular reactions, remove excretory products efficiently, prevent constipation. So. There are many functions of water in your body. Right children?
So we have completed the first chapter of this lesson. So in this chapter, we learn about different types of nutrients and their functions and the food items that are rich in those nutrients. At the same time, we learn about the importance of water and fiber as well. So in the next chapter, we are going to learn about more information on nutrients. To watch these important lessons, subscribe to DP Education's YouTube channel right now. Click on the bell icon to stay updated on the latest lessons. Sri Lanka's largest free online school, DP Education.